Howdy, Epi Prigo. It's Miss Kosh. I am picking up where um, Mr. Passwater, uh, he recently posted more multiple choice questions. So that is very exciting. Um, so we'll see how far we get. I think he had posted numbers one through 60 on unit three um, and then added beyond that. So um, I, I think that's correct. And here we go. So I'm going to jump in. Um, as always, no, I can't really share the PDF with you. Um, Two, one, I can't share the PDF. Two, um, I have not looked at these problems at all. Three, like, subscribe, comment below, all, this, all the things. Okay, um, let's jump in and do some math. So we've got this function, and it says uh, three, negative one, and seven, three represent a minimum and a maximum value. Okay, so sometimes three, negative one would be here, seven, positive three would be here. Um, so if we go from as low as negative one to as high as three, that's a, an amplitude, that's a distance of four, but an amplitude of two. And so the midline, that is not really the midline, but the midline would be y equals one, and the amplitude would be two. So the a value is two or negative two, it's definitely not four. Um, and the d value, it went up one, so it's gonna be that. Okay. Um, okay, the value of b, so here, we, now they're giving us um, two, four is, um, and then we have four, 10. Okay, so if this is a max and a min, then what's happening, and there um, um, represents a max and a minimum value respectively on the graph, what is the value of B? So I'm assuming they're consecutive max and mins. Um, so if this goes from two to four, then that means by six, it's back down to where it started. Um, and so the period goes from two to six, the period is four. So two pi over B equals four, um, and that means that B would equal pi over two. There we go. Okay, similar idea represents a minimum, maximum and a minimum value. Um, values of B and D. Okay, so let's kind of get a, um, so pi, and then we have six, and two pi two. Um, so this is from pi, and then this is two pi. Draw, I didn't draw it to scale, I just need it to show me what's happening. Um, okay, so if this is a maximum and then a minimum value, then the midline is gonna be here at four. So the midline is gonna be D. The midline tells me what the D value is. I move up that, that midline amount. Um, and then what is the value of B? Well, so what it's done here is it's done, this is half a period. Um, so if half a period is pi, the whole period would be two pi, which is the parent function. So the B value is just one. Um, be careful, it's not that the B value is, this is saying the B value is the period. That's not true. It's two pi over B gives you the period. Um, these feel kind of repetitive. Well, I mean, they, they, they're very similar. They're asking slightly different things each time. Um, okay, so I'll do, I'll do this one. Pi over 4, 10, and then 3 pi over 4, 40. So this is 10, this is 40, this is pi over 4, this is 3 pi over 4. I didn't read the directions, but I assume it's a minimum or a maximum. What is the period? Okay, so that means we have half a pi to get halfway there, so then the whole period would be pi. Um, well, this is 5 pi over 4, which means that the period is pi, which means 2 pi over b, the b value, is b would equal 2. Did they ask me that? No, I answered a question that wasn't asked. The period is not pi over 2. The period gets me back to where I started. So if I start at the very bottom, I have to get all the way back to the bottom. Um, and the amplitude, so this total distance is 30, so the amplitude is half of that. So the amplitude is 15. There we go. Those are fun. I like trig. I hope you do too. Um, oh, the tangent function. Oh, fun. Okay. Um, tangent, um, so if you totally forgot everything and you're, and you're starting from scratch, keep in mind that tangent is sine of x over cosine of x. You are not Chuck Norris. You cannot divide by zero. So we have asymptotes when cosine equals zero, which is when um, it's pi over two plus pi k. So where are my... Um, where are my asymptotes? I haven't done anything to change it. I shifted the inflection point up and I stretched it. Um, I would write this equation like this. Um, but the only thing, everything in here is what would affect your asymptote. This just means that instead of going like this, we have moved up one. And so we're going more like that. This too just stretches things. I think this one is kind of a lame, I think this is lame, and so when I write a test or quiz in my room, I might make this one or negative one, but I don't ask my students to give me more points here because, anyway, um, so I just don't. But anyway, that stretch things, that stretch things, but it doesn't change the asymptotes. Okay, so let's see. 
Which of the following is the vertical asymptotes? It's this. Pi over 2 plus pi k, where, okay, where k is an integer, so not plus 2 pi k, not that, not that, okay. There we go. Okay, so tangent, now on this one, um, what we can do is we can take this, is going to impact the asymptotes, we can take this and set it equal to where the parent function would have asymptotes, and then we can solve. Okay, so if I multiply both everybody by 2, I get pi plus 2 pi k, so that's where my asymptotes are. Okay, same idea here and here. Well, this one's slightly different, but um, if I have x minus pi is equal to pi over 2 plus pi k, when I add this, I get x is equal to 3 pi over 2 plus pi k. But keep in mind, how far apart are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2? Well, they're exactly pi, over, they're exactly pi units apart. So basically, what happened was, is I had this graph that looked, here's an asymptote at pi over 2, and then they said, well, shift this over, Okay, so what was at pi over 2 now shifted to 3 pi over 2. So we did a shift of a whole period, so it matched up exactly. So it is the regular um, asymptotes. Um, they were just trying to be a little clever. That was fun. Okay. Um, a and B are constants. Which of the following is true? Okay, so it's definitely following the shape of the parent function. Um, at pi over, so but everything got squished in. So the asymptotes normally are at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, but they've come in, so that means that we have um, tangent of 2x for sure. So you can verify and say, well, 2x would equal the normal parent function asymptotes. The, the asymptotes of the parent function are this. If I divide by 2, it's multiplying by 1 half, I get pi over 4 plus pi over 2k, which is what happened. They were pi over 2 apart. There was the first one at pi over 4. Okay, so that, that would be what I would do just to double check. I don't need to do that because I knew I was right. Um, the, and then the A value, so if A is, what are they talking about here? They're comparing A to 0. Well, if A tangent does this sort of shape, and if A is positive, it still keeps doing this. Um, if A is negative, it's going to flip over and do something like that, but it's not negative. So we want to eliminate those. And I'm saying here that B is, well, I said based on this graph that B is equal to 2, which is bigger than 1. Okay. Um, oh, so what have we done here? We have a period of 2 pi. It goes from 0 to 2 pi. So then that means that our B value was, um, well, we had a period of pi over 2 was when, X, when this was 2. So this is going to do the opposite. So our B value is going to be 1 half. And then what did we do? We had to shift, okay, so if all I have is um, y equals tangent of 1 half x, then what I've done is I've pulled the asymptotes apart, and I'd still be at 0, and my asymptote would be at pi and at negative pi. Or, I mean, there's infinitely many, but there's a set there. Um, but now I've shifted either to the right or to the left pi. So I would accept, I mean, there's, there's infinitely many ways to write this, but um, I would write this down in my answer key as I'm working with my students. Um, and then, yeah, I did say pi. Okay, so b is 1 half, which we have here, here, but not here and here. And then they're saying pi over 2. No, I disagree. It shifted this whole thing, pi units. So there we go. And it actually, it shifted pi units the other way, too, which is why um, if I gave you, I would write this problem and say, find the equation of this graph. And I would write in my answer key, this, just so that if you gave me one or the other, I wouldn't have to go double check. Uh, okay, let's see. On this one, oh, now we have a period of 4 pi, which means we have a 1 fourth. So it's one of those two. We're still going uh, the normal shape of the, of the tangent function, so it's that one. This one now tangent has been flipped over. Okay, so let's get rid of the positive a values. Um, and now we're, we're just expanding that period each time. <coughs> um, okay, so we have a period of 8 pi. So it's going to be um, one, right here. We, had, we stretched it. Normally it has a period of 1 pi, and now it has a period of 8 pi. All right, there you go. Okay, let's see. How about this one? We, um, we squished our period to um, pi over 2, so that means our b value is 2, so not this, not this. Um, and then we shifted, actually we shift either way, but um, this would be shifting us down, so that's no good. So I would accept plus or minus here, um, but of our choices, it's that one. 
Okay, let's see. The graph of F is mapped onto the graph of G in the same xy plane by a vertical dilation of the graph by a factor of 4. Which of the following is an expression? Oh. Okay, I think if the whole thing is... Um, uh, so what happened here, this graph is going to be down one and do something like this. So the period has changed, but the um, but doing a vertical dilation is just going to pull things apart. So what was here is now going to go down, even, be pulled from the um, x-axis even farther. So I think we're doing, we're looking at this one right here. So I, um, I think he has posted some of his answers, but I'm not looking at them. <laughs> so if, um, if you disagree with me, let me know and we can go back and double check. Um, I'm good, but I'm not perfect. And, and the same with Mr. Passwater and whoever does his answer keys. They're good. They're really, really good, but they're not perfect either. So occasionally we catch things. Um, okay, so let's see. We have this graph, 5 times tangent of 2x. It's mapped, mapped on um, with a vertical translation of the graph by pi units, a vertical translation. So I think we just went up pi. We don't go up pi very often, but that seems to be the best. Um, a vertical translation is gonna shift us up and down. So there we go. Okay, um, let's see. We have this graph and we're going to a horizontal translation that many units right okay so um we have to have it factored out so this is going to shift us up um this will shift us these two both will shift us to the right but this one we didn't they didn't factor out the four so it actually this would be four times x minus what is this um pi over eight because if i distribute it back through i get pi over two um this this is actually a shift of pi over eight so they're trying to see if you're paying attention so it's that one Okay, a horizontal dilation, horizontal dilation, so by a factor of five, so we want to see one-fifth. Uh, multiply this by one-fifth, so I think we're looking at this guy. Okay. You know what? Um, come back for the next video. I will pick up here in just a few minutes. All right. Like, subscribe, comment below, and go practice. Good luck.